the Millionaire Imprint for Women. This new radio show is about imprinting wealth for women, inspiring women of all ages to heal their karmic debts, to transcend the shame of poverty consciousness that women have lived with for centuries. It's time for women, for you, to have a new relationship with money, to radiate wealth from the inside out. We are creating a ripple effect, empowering millions of women to claim their inner wealth. Join Cornelia on The Cornelia Stephanie Show at Transformation Talk Radio. Are you in? Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show with my beautiful co-host, Donette Palmore. Welcome to the show, Donette. Thank you. It's great to be here. And to answer the question to the end of the show is, yes, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. We're in. Let's in about making that money and getting our foundations cleaned up and getting out of debt and getting prepared for the holidays, because that's what you want us to talk about today. Yes. We want to talk about preparing for the holidays because in the notes I read that you were saying that uh, people just, you know, the hol- holidays sneak up on us and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, credit cards, credit cards, credit cards, and then next thing you know comes January and it's like, you know, people get depressed and are, are in way over their head and uh, created much more debt than they intended to do. So with today's show, you want to talk about how not to do that again, make those right. bad habits, right? Yes, it's, it's a vicious cycle that people can and do get caught up in every single year. And I mean, can you believe it's the last quarter of the year and the holidays are like right around the corner? I mean, it is here. Um, and everybody, I think, is going into panic mode because nobody is really financially ready, especially with all the stuff that we have had happen this year. Um, I was doing all this research, trying to find out how much money do people spend in the last three months of the year? Can you guess what it is? No, I can't. It's $1.5 trillion. Really? Yes. And that is not including birthdays and events that also come up sometimes during these last few months. $1.5 $1.5 trillion in the last three months on holidays. Christmas, I, I looked up Halloween, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's. Wow, that's, that's a Incredible, lot. Incredible, right? Yeah, yeah. And that averages out to about $12,000 per household. Wow. That's a big chunk of money, right? Yeah. I mean, this is all for gifts and food. <laughs> it's not even an investment. We're just kind of spending it. And so how does this happen? How does this happen? And, and here is, uh, I I see this with a lot of my clients. I see it with people out there. Um, I totally get it. I spent a ton of money at the last three months of the year. I wouldn't doubt if I was one of those ones spending $12,000 in the last three months of the year. I'm pretty sure I probably was. Don't tell my husband. (laughs) He might have a heart attack. (laughs) But uh, we have six kids, and I wasn't paying attention, obviously, right? Buying costumes, meals, gifts, decorations, all these things that come up at this time of year. Basically, I just went in the store and threw everything in the cart. Whatever I wanted, I just threw it in the cart, uh, never gave it a second thought, mm-hmm. up, didn't care about it, just did it. At Christmas time, here's something I did at Christmas that was kind of crazy. Um, all of my kids got an equal amount of gifts. So here was my logic pre getting my life together, right? <laughs> I would say, okay, I'm going to get them all five gifts. They get like one big one and four smaller ones, plus their whatever goes in their stocking. But we think, oh, that's cheap. But you know what I put in there? Gift cards, which can add up pretty quick, right? So I would go shopping, start shopping. I wasn't keeping track. So when I would... Um, put everything out and start making a list of who got what and what it was and all that. If I had bought one person, seven gifts, what do you think I did? I actually bought, made sure everybody else had seven gifts. Yeah. Instead of taking those two gifts back, I just bought more. It was so crazy. And we would have these big parties, which I love. If you know me, I love to have parties. We entertain all the time. 
Um, but I made sure everybody that walked into my house had something under that tree for them. And that can get really, really expensive. And it can get out of control pretty quick. Plus, we have several birthdays during this time. So I may have been maybe a little bit on the higher end of that $12,000. Yeah. I bet a lot of people, uh, I bet there's a lot of, lot of people that can recognize themselves in your story, in, in, in the habits, in those habits. They're just unconscious and until you change the game, right? Exactly. And, and that's what it is. And, and, you know, like I've said before, seven years ago is when I became intentional with my money. I got fed up with it. I was tired of it. I wanted something different. And this is where I changed my behavior. Um, I no longer was putting whatever in my basket. I had a set amount for each and every holiday, each and every birthday, and each amount I was going to spend on each person. All the way down to that. I make a list of who and what I'm going to buy people, um, how much they are going to get spent on them. And you know what? I stick to that. And it's cut my budget or my spending, I should say, way in half in the last few months of this year or any year, I should say. Yeah, so you feel pretty relaxed going into the holiday season because you know what you are going to do. You know how much money you're going to spend. You know what you're going to do. You're organized, and you know what you're going to do. So you feel more relaxed going into it with all the stress that's going on anyway, and you've got it included in your budget, which is what you're doing all the time, helping people create a better uh, lifestyle with their money, right? Right, exactly. Um and I, I'm going in stress-free. I'm not stressed about it one bit. What stresses me out is actually having to go out and do the shopping. <laughs> yeah. That stresses me out. Well, but, do, you still, do, you, do you do your shopping in the store? I do a lot of shopping online. Do you do shopping online? Well, it's evolved over the years because my kids are now adults, but now we have grandkids. And, and now that we don't have a Toys R Us anymore, it's devastating because I can't go in there and buy all these toys. Um, so it's it's probably a mixture of both. Um, I'm not sure what this year will look like. Um, it probably will be mostly online because I'm super busy right now and I'm okay with that. And if that's the path that you need to take this year, you need to be okay with that too. I think making sure we don't create, we create as less stress as we can around this time of year so that we can actually enjoy it. I think we get so wrapped up in, in all of this stuff that we're not stopping to actually enjoy, not just the holiday and what it stands for, but the people that are around us. Yeah. You know, I just, I I think this is so important. I I talked about this on the previous show and I said, is it just me or is everybody in an extreme rush and hurry? Is, is it just me or do I feel like everybody's chasing and running around like crazy and missing these connections, maybe solutions that they've been praying for, asking for, or, you know, the, the amazing connections that you can have with people if you're just so running around, so stressed and not, not able to see uh, what's going on right in front of you. Do you find that that's happening for, in, in your area? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think with, you know, us not being able to get together as much, um, with all this stuff with COVID going on, people are also hesitant to do that. But I think through all this COVID, I've really um, been able, to, and I think a lot of people have spent that time with the people in our household and the people that we love and care about. Um, and even though it's, what has it been, eight or nine months? It seems like such a short time ago that this all started. And now here we are at the end of the year. I mean, this started at the beginning of the year. And here we are and 2020 is almost over. It's like it blows my mind. So I think on top of that, yeah, it's stressful. And and people aren't connecting when they're stressed out. That's true. That's true. It's good that you're going to introduce us to our guests here when we're going to take a break here in just a few minutes. And we've got about two minutes and you're going to take a break. And then when we come back, you're going to introduce us to our guests and we're going to talk about how to prepare, right? What what yes. to do, not to be all stressed out. I did one of the um, processes um, a little bit early this year. And that was, I just sat down and I looked at January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, in like those quarters and looked at where I was energetically and where what I thought I was going to be doing 
I kind of wrote it out on my on my um, journal, you know, and that's very it, cool. It was a really wonderful process because I realized uh, for the first nine months it was hard go. It was really really hard go, and then and then all of a sudden I really turned a corner and and burst some new things and you know paid off some debts and. It just felt like, wow, I was kicking ass here. And this, <laughs> this felt really good, you know. And then it's getting me all ready for the next three months and also more success in 2021, which is what we all want for our businesses and our world, right? Yep. It, that's fantastic. And I think we need to do more of that. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we take a break, and then when we come back, you'll introduce us to who you brought with you today. Absolutely. Super excited. Okay. Good. Great. Let's take a break, David. Your favorite Transformation Talk radio shows are now on Spotify. What? Simply search out your favorite host or show by name, tap the subscribe button, and boom. With over 150 million active monthly users on Spotify, Transformation Talk Radio is thrilled to expand our reach so you never have to miss an episode. Yeah! Well, what the heck are you waiting for? Log into Spotify and subscribe now. Raising the vibrations through stimulating conversations while exploring the mysteries of Atlantis and Lemuria on Tales from the Mer World Radio with me, Amira Beth. Join us every second and fourth Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Be ready to feel empowered and an active part of the changing earth. For more information about me, visit Amerabeth.com. How many times do you find yourself saying it was nothing or just doing my job when really you knocked it out of the park? How did you get like this? Next time someone tells you great job, you'll know how to accept it and not deflect it by listening to Courage to be Seen Radio with host Sherry Clark. Sherry Clark is an experienced global engineering leader, coach and mentor. From her experiences one-on-one -on -one coaching to corporate consulting and executive coaching, Sherry has learned many women need at least three things to discover and face success. Learn about the ACES program, how to survive male-dominated fields with grace and authenticity, and reach the top without ever once giving up on who you are. Courage to be Seen host Sherry Clark explores the awesome power of your entire self and how far you can go by being more you. Check out her website, CourageToBeSeen.com. You have the courage to be seen. See you later. Healing has a ripple effect. One person's healing affects everyone around them. This is where the power of sharing our stories can be so important. Tune in to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Megan provides you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. Enact the power of radical change. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Are you tired of being tired? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the adrenal glands, the workhorse of the body? They are the means by which you position yourself in life for whatever comes your way. Tiny but mighty, producing hormones the body uses to promote energy and vitality. These adrenals determine how you respond to stress and when depleted, the body loses its ability to function powerfully when we need it most. The much-needed adrenaline or epinephrine is not available for emergency situations. Cortisone and cortisol, the longer-acting anti-stress adrenal hormones, can also become depleted due to the pace of our everyday lives. We overwork and undernutrition our most powerful ally that helps us to live the lives we desire. We are able to determine the optimum function of the adrenals and put your system back in balance. Contact us today to feel powerfully energized at 888-777-4232 or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Yeah, yippee skippy to that, baby. We're not done yet. Some of us are out here to educate and inspire. This year, 2020, is the year 
We got it. Show me the money in the cash flow. I'm Dr. Pat. This is the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. Visit the drpatshow.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cornelia Stephanie Donnett. It's nice to have you uh, introduce us to your beautiful guests that you're going to introduce us to. Yes, I am so excited to introduce you guys to these two experts. So Lamar is a financial coach uh, of Lampshade Consulting. He was born and raised in the greater Birmingham, Alabama area. He married his best friend, Michelle, and together they have a beautiful daughter, Riley Grace. Over the years, Lamar has gained a passion for helping others to stay for others to stay out of the situation they were in many years ago. Lamar often gets asked, why did I start coaching? This is what he says. I have been there. My wife and I have found ourselves in a big financial mess over 10 years ago with lots of debt and not enough money to pay all the bills. Luckily, we were able to find a plan that worked for us and cleaned it up after about four years of hard work and selling some things that were cherished. I do not want anyone else to ever have to be in that situation. So that's why I chose coaching. Telling my story could help someone avoid the struggles that we went through. And then we have Heather. She is a coach of chaos. Chaos, I I messed that up already. (laughs) She's gonna help you not have chaos. Uh, Following the crumbles in the chaos of her full-time job as a busy mom of three, a wife to a traveling hubby, and keeping it weird in Austin, Texas, it's safe to say that her life is never boring. In addition to running her coaching business uh, uh, called Chaos and Cookies, she is a certified She is certified coach for a premier virtual fitness and nutrition program helping others feel better while sustaining a healthy lifestyle. She gained 10 years of experience as the director of marketing, building multiple court reporting companies, and she is a published writer and content coordinator for Neighborhood Magazines, where she teaches others how to be more self-sufficient with common household tasks. Every woman should know how their home functions and what to do if something malfunctions, man or no man. With her husband on the road, searching how to on the internet has transformed her into a mommy MacGyver. I do, she doesn't know how she has, I don't know how you have the time. You're like a super mom is what people say to her. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Heather and Lamar. I'm so happy you guys are able to be here with us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks, Donna. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about your business and who you serve. And Heather, you can start. Sure. Um, so uh, chaos coordinator, that's what you were digging for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, chaos and cookies is um, a company that kind of came from the health and wellness side of things. And I just wanted to equip and empower moms to have a way to kind of just streamline and take like the mental load off and like kind of dump everything that's here on like paper or somewhere so like they can help others in their home become more self-sufficient where they're not asking mom or texting her all the time when she leaves the house and they can just kind of go to like this manual for your house and just be able to look it up. And until you checked it and look through it, then you can call me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, cause that happens with my husband all the time. And that's, so I just try to help a, uh, kind of streamline, help women be more self-sufficient and kind of give them some freedom to do what they want to do, work on their business, get healthier, you know, free that, free that time up. That's awesome. Lamar. Well, cool. Thank you. So I'm one of those, I work, I'm a coach that works with people that are going through life changes. And my focus is pretty much working with people that are going to get married. Um, I take it back I used to be in the entertainment business. I did that for over 18 years. I'm DJing, MC. I've worked with so many brides, thousands of brides. So I've been there. I know what, I know, I know what it's going to take to get married. I know the things you should spend it on, things you shouldn't spend it on, and everything in between that. So I've been there. And I want you know, to get them through that because going through that sometimes, you feel really trapped. You're, you're scared. You're like, how much is it going to cost? 
we're going to go broke with this. Are we going to be in debt for the rest of our lives because of the wedding? You know, we've got some simple tools I can use with them and, you help them focus and take control of it and have, you know, the best times of their lives so they're not, you know, broke for the rest of their lives or, or in debt. So That's fantastic. And that just reminded me, um, we were just at a wedding last weekend, and it was of somebody that I watched grow up, mm-hmm. and he actually had saved up $20,000 to pay for his wedding. I mean, that is amazing, right? It was so cool. And just the difference of being able to not stress out about the finances. It's, it's a world of difference when you're going through anything in your life. So that's really cool. Um, you, you want to talk a little bit about a time that you were not prepared, like a specific situation or event uh, that you were not prepared in, um, and just kind of walk us through that and, and how you overcame it. Lamar, we'll start with you this time. Cool. I'll get to go first this time. Oh, gosh. Um, I would say I'll take us way back. This is probably mm, 2007. Um, good situation. It, it, this goes back into my story of me and the wife. Um, we're in a lot of debt back then. We had two houses. For some reason, we thought it'd be cool to have another house. We'll flip one of those houses. Easy to do. Anybody can flip a house, right? <laughs> don't try it. <laughs> don't, don't get yourself into that. It's a big mess. But the, the problem with that is we were struggling a little bit. It's like, okay, we got a little rent, we got a rent over here, but she broke the house. And now we got to fix that. And then it's like, well, we don't have enough money coming in to pay this. What about this bill? What about that bill? We're like, this isn't working. This isn't going to, this isn't going to help. So like with anything else, whether it's a wedding or anything else, we had to come up, we had to find a plan. We had to find, okay, stop. Let's write it down. Let's figure it out. We found a spending plan that worked for us. Um, and, you know, just just to just go through the process of writing it down and actually, okay, here's what's coming in. Well, probably put it a little backwards. Well, here's what's going out and here's what's coming in. And we're like, oh, oh no wonder we're having problems. That that, that number is negative at the bottom. It shouldn't, shouldn't be like that. We, we got to work on that. So, yeah, we had to sell some things. We had to um, cut back on food, cut back on groceries, cut back on eating out, whatever it was we cut back on, even to the point of getting the bills down to whatever it could. And um, we got through that. It took us four years to get through it, pay it off, sell the other house. And then um, cool thing was after that, we had a bunch of money saved. Um, I moved on from doing entertainment. I lost that job of 18 years, and we were in a good spot. I was able to get to coaching. So, you know, like I said, the main thing is a plan, writing it down and, and figuring out what's best for you. That's, that's the best way to get through it. So it That's fantastic. Through. Wow. What about you, Heather? Well, for me – being like being unprepared, it's not really, and I've never really been like that, but something that my husband and I have never really done was like budget and actually like watch what we spend. And because of the times right now, um, businesses are taking hits and we're having to shift. And, you know, we usually are pretty conservative and we, we say, you know, pretty, prepared for stuff like this, but it's getting now it's going super longer than I think anyone thought of that. We're now like finally on the same page where we're like, we need to like budget, like how much for, you know, do we pay for school for this, for that, and really break it down to really understand like what, what's reasonable and not just kind of like, cause we've kind of been good and it's like, we're still okay, but you just don't want you just don't know, you, you know, get stuck in that. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. I think uh, you are like one in a gabillion that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations. Work, on that. Yeah. I need help to get the budget though. Cause I, we do like spend, but we now need to like pay more attention just yeah. to be more conscious. Cause money is scary. It's a scary thing. For, yeah, so for you know, right now, because there's so many, like you said, so many, so many people had to pivot, so many entrepreneurs. But I think this is one of the things that's great about being an entrepreneur. When we're on, entrepreneurs, we know how to hustle. We know how to uh, you know, f- ask for solutions, find solutions. If, if we're in a situation where there's like debt that needs to be taken care of, then it's like, okay, here's, here's the debt amount, and then what are we going to do about it right now? What are we going to do as an entrepreneur? How can we, boom, get this done? And I did a Facebook Live yesterday where I talked about an incredible story 
to uh, Marianne Williamson when, when she uh, ran for president, to be able to say that, I ran for president, what a legacy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> to make that statement, I ran for president not too long ago, oh. and, and, you know, and then COVID hit. And then she had to also pivot with what she was doing, but she started promoting then all the people that are up and coming in the political arena, and she started focusing there. And she goes, and now what I'm doing, and now what needs to be done is I have to pay off my campaign debt. And that campaign debt is $168,000. And I was like, wow, talk about humility and talk about power. Because when you speak to that elephant and you say, that's what has to be done. And then she said, I contacted some of my colleagues and we're gonna be putting on an event. And that event is gonna be for two days. And they, um, and all that money that's going to be made from that event is going to be going to pay off her debt. And that right there is a powerful model of leadership, of taking care of it, of solving a problem. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool to be able to say I ran for president. That's that's fantastic. Um, so as being a coach and, and probably most of us talking to, to people and friends and family, we find that most are not prepared, uh, not just financially, but in every area of their life. I mean, estate planning, death, do people have life insurance, emergencies, natural disasters, and even with their careers, some are not prepared. They're just kind of winging it and going through life. And these are all huge things that we should be planning for, but yet we neglect them. So, what are some things that you have seen or heard people struggle with when it comes to being prepared? I guess for, for my business, like that's what I deal with. I'm trying to prepare that I have that brain that since my husband travels, I, I maybe it's a little morbid, but I'm always thinking the worst. Like what if his plane goes down? What? Cause I'm a, I'm a mom of three, they're young kids. And so I'm home. And if, and he is our breadwinner. <laughs> and that just kind of goes through. And I don't work anymore when it comes to like an actual structured job. And I think that people that are just unprepared don't know, like for, for like it, for instance, I don't know that side of it. Uh, I want to know exactly what I'm dealing with because you want to be feel prepared and not feel out of control and just trying to kind of just streamline because that's really big right now for people is to get everything kind of together because everything is so unsure in the world right now. We're trying to control what we actually can, which is our environment that we live in, which is our house and our space. And so people are trying to gain control of maybe that closet or maybe like just their schedule and trying to just keep their kids out of their hair. (laughs) So trying to help them kind of, uh, I guess, chunk it and not take it all at once and get overwhelmed. It's really pacing. It's not going to happen all at once and find what's most important and start there and move forward. That's perfect. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I, 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 don't, I don't think most people, they don't know they're not prepared. That may sound a little weird. I don't think they know that they're not. And I, and I think to this year has taught some people that it's like, wow, I wasn't ready for that. What do you mean I'm not I'm going to be at home with the kids in the background with teaching them all this stuff? I'm not prepared for this. I'm not ready for any of this stuff. What do you mean I'm going to be furloughed for three months? Uh, you know, so those things, we don't know we're not prepared. So, you know, take it, unfortunately, it takes some instances of, of, you know, the pandemic or whatnot to get us and go, hey, we need, to, we need to look better at that. Whether you're running a restaurant, running a business, running your household, we got to think about some of these things. So, yeah, not not knowing is a lot of, we didn't know it out there. That, that's a great point. Um, Heather, you said that you don't have a real job. And you, <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean by that is like a structured, like yeah. I'm not getting a paycheck from a, like a, like a corporation. I use, I've always worked for somebody yeah. right now. I work for me or I'm like a contractor. So I, I'm, in charge of my destiny, you work as hard, you know, I bring in what I bring in as long, you know, and so for me, it's really hard because we decided that I was going to stay home with the kids because 
we had some, you know, complications early on with some of them and it would just, and he was traveling and we wanted a parent present. And so when I left and there was some f- factors in there, like writing out a non-compete and things like that, I don't know what to do with myself when I'm not like working or financially uh, contributing for me. Cause I just always have worked my whole life. And so when I say that, I mean, like, I don't like have a corporation or I'm not a payroll. Yeah. <laughs> You just wanted you, you, not just you, but everybody know it's okay. Yeah. Having kids is a 24 seven job. You don't get a day off. You don't get an hour off. So I wanted to recognize that. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to clarify too, because it's, um, okay. it's a real job. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just had a client. I, I think she uh, texted me last week or the week before I've only been working with this lady for two months and something really cool happened. uh, And this is about being prepared two months ago. If her car would have broke down, she would not have known what to do. It would have been a disaster. So last week I got a text from her saying the car broke down, but I didn't think about getting a rental. I didn't think about the stress of what it was going to cost. I just paid for it. Mm. I mean, the peace it brings to be prepared. And Lamar, I think you made a great point that people don't realize they're not prepared. Um, And then something comes up and you're like, crap, I just didn't think that was going to happen to me. Um, And I think that happens a lot. So maybe what do you think might be blocking people from being prepared? Um, And was there a time you were blocked by something? Good, good question there. Um, Ooh, a time when I was blocked for that. That'd be, I think about that one. Um, why are people not prepared? That's a good question. I, and I think, you know, as you know, some of the focus I think you weren't today was the holidays. Um, that's, that's a great, great discussion on that. Why aren't they prepared? Because they're caught up in the holidays. Who's not <laughs> caught up in, you know, hey, I want to go see this. You got to go buy this. It's the latest thing right now. Oh my gosh, we got to go see the lights. We're going to decorate for Christmas. Got to have this great tree. We just get caught up in it. We don't, you know, it's not, we're, we're not training our, training ourselves or putting the energy in the right place, I guess you could say. We got the energy in the wrong place. We got to figure out where the energy is going to go. Um, yeah, it's. I, I, I think I've caught myself back in the day being blocked. You get caught up in the holidays and go, gosh, it's, you know, okay, we got to press for this person, this person, this person, and, and like, whoa, stop. Now it's just stop. Like, you know what? I don't have to have that. We don't have to have any of this stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely the holidays are – are one of those that we got to you know be very careful with. All right, yeah, you're you're absolutely right, and that's why w- what we're talking about today. <laughs> yeah. I think social media and just the um, the way that we receive our information now is a huge factor in how some people like live their daily lives. So they're comparing themselves to maybe somebody else that's showing them like a a vision or uh, the view, but that's a very distorted view. It's what they want to see. And they feel like they need to, to be equal to that, or they'll feel less than if they are comparing. And I feel like it's so skewed and that's kind of, everyone's just trying to reach an unattainable goal at that. Like, honestly, cause there's no such thing as perfection. You're only yeah. seeing what they want. And so you're seeing like the beautiful tablescapes or the beautiful tree that's perfectly decorated. And there's no ornaments on the floor because like the children were not like my tree has no, well, when they were little, no ornaments on the bottom, they were all up on the top because yeah. they would just pick at them. And I was like, Nope, Nope. Right. So that's yeah. not, most people, unless you have a tree that's like in a corner in a room that never, ever gets touched, like that's not really real. They probably did it for the photo and that was it. And it was done by a professional. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that yeah. people are comparing themselves too much to others. And so then they get into this like pleasing state and then, oh, I got to get someone for something for this person and this person. And they're not focused and they need to bring that in and really just look at like big pictures, like the the big picture, but like what's truly important. Like, don't they yeah. say like, pick your five trusted people that you would tell, like, look at your real circle, people that will yeah. be with you or who's still with you now, especially with this stuff, the hard stuff. And, and to add to that, I, I think people really, um, 
not only do they not think they're not prepared, but they don't believe it's going to happen to them. Uh, or they, they'll get to it later, right? Or we just simply don't know how. I, I know that was uh, my case. I, I didn't know how to get all this financial stuff done. Budgeting, saving, retirement, planning. Oh my gosh, it was so overwhelming. Um, and there's so much information out there that can make it even more overwhelming. Uh, so many voices in, in the area to say so many different things. Um, and I, you really got to pick what resonates with you. What brings you peace when you hear that person's voice talking, their program, their solution, and narrow it down to that and not be overwhelmed by all of it. <laughs> right. One of the things that people, I feel that people can do this holiday season is make something for someone I find yeah. lately I've been really getting into that and I'm really enjoying um, creativity and making things and making things special. Uh, not, you know, not always, you know, going out and buying something, but making something, a scarf or something like that. Something yeah. in that way that is simple and that's made with love. And there's so many ways and we can express our love. Uh, to the people that that we have relationship with when it comes to things like that. And I think that people actually prefer to receive something that's made, handmade or, you know, uh, something like that, even if it's an audio card, a video card, uh, uh, something that they can, you know, see how much effort you put into. Yeah, it's very touching that, you know, they put their time and their effort and their love into it. Um, Very true. So we talked about why people are not prepared <laughs> um, and why in, in this last quarter that we're in, uh, why people tend to spend the most money and get the most stressed out and they're the least organized, right? I mean, it's pretty much chaos in the last three months. What do you think are some of the dangers of not being prepared? And what are some of the problems it might cause? I think the closer, the closer you get to... Um holidays is when like prices get hiked up or you're so busy doing things, you do things last minute and you're just kind of just spending just to get it out of the way and not like taking your time and shop, you know, uh, price comparisons and stuff like that, that maybe you would do if you had longer and more time when really you do the holidays don't change. The holidays are the, are these dates. They do not move every year, (laughs) every year. Here, they do not move. And that's what drives me insane. Like when people aren't prepared, because it's like, that's on your calendar. Like it doesn't move. It's not a fluid thing. And so we were really should put some more time and just really uh, think or plan ahead. And I've got some tips on how you can do that. But you can really, I think when you get backed in a corner and you're just like spending just to spend, like, I'm just going to grab the easiest thing because then there's a covered and it's off my plate, but it might not be the best for your wallet. Exactly. Lamar. Yeah. um, Definitely agree with you on that. Um, Especially um, when it comes to that. So yeah, there's um, a bunch of dangers, a stressed out part. Um, I'm going to go a different route with it though. Um, What's really interesting is I've had some clients get really stressed out because they're givers and they want to give to all these different organizations, do all this stuff. They get stressed out about that. And it just kind of blows mind. It's like, and and they're all worried about giving money here, give money there. We always give money to this thing. We always give money to that thing. And, you know, it's great. They want to do that. Sometimes we got to, we got to, I got to ground them. We'll go, Hey, look, there's other ways to give besides with money. So um, there's some of that too. I, I just think, this time of the year, there's so many people with their hands out asking for money and wanting help that it's, we got to, we got to ground our clients in that too and get them on the right track. Cause I mean, giving is very important for a lot of our clients. So get, getting them, getting them honed in right. And, um, you know, finding how they can help the right ways instead of going broke, trying to give money. Yeah. That, that's, that's just a backwards approach, but yeah, that's one of the dangers. No, totally. And, and it's added stress. As you guys said, people are going into debt over it, spending too much money, um, and they're not really enjoying the process and the journey, as we said earlier. And I think people are also stressed um, and feel so obligated uh, that they tend to overspend. Like you said, Lamar, they want to give. Um, but sometimes um, 
they can uh like i felt obligated i had to buy everybody that came in the door has to have a present they ha- i they have to um and sometimes we put this burden on ourselves but a lot of times uh i've heard my clients say it comes from their families they have these um expectations that they have to buy certain things and spend a certain amount of money um and i think we ha- need to have a real conversation around this and about this because we're going into debt over these uh, expectations and we're not enjoying it and we're spending too much money. We're not focusing on being thankful and giving and celebrating. And as you said earlier, Cornelia, enjoying the people who are around us and really being present in that moment. Um, So what are some things they can do to get through the next three months uh, with the least amount of financial stress or chaos? Why don't we pick this up when we come back from break? Let's, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatshow.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. How many times do you find yourself saying it was nothing or just doing my job when really you knocked it out of the park? How did you get like this? Next time someone tells you great job, you'll know how to accept it and not deflect it by listening to Courage to be Seen Radio with host Sherry Clark. Sherry Clark is an experienced global engineering leader, coach and mentor. From her experiences one-on-one coaching to corporate consulting and executive coaching, Sherry has learned many women need at least three things to discover and face success. Learn about the ACES program, how to survive male-dominated fields with grace and authenticity, and reach the top without ever once giving up on who you are. Courage to be Seen host Sherry Clark explores the awesome power of your entire self and how far you can go by being more you. Check out her website, CourageToBeSeen.com. You have the courage to be seen. See you later. Healing has a ripple effect. One person's healing affects everyone around them. This is where the power of sharing our stories can be so important. Tune in to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Megan provides you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. Enact the power of radical change. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Sometimes being human has its challenges. Our physical health falters, our spirits sag, our dreams don't immediately come to fruition. Welcome to the power of Maximum Medicine Radio. Join me, Doc Martin, in conversations that will blow your mind about healing. In our hit show, Doc Martin addresses the scientific with bridging to the mystical approaches to give you a new narrative about maximum medicine. In this live call-in show, we will journey into the extraordinary genius of the human body and talk about other beliefs that impact being your multidimensional self. We seek the seen and the unseen and explore the earthbound and the otherworldly, all with the purpose of calling forth the maximum you. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.SharonMartinMD.com. Welcome back, everyone. Wow, we were having a good time uh, behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, so... I guess you're going to have to reformulate the question again, Donette, because yes, that's yes. the question. I was having such a good time. I'm already thinking, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. <laughs> so what are some things that people can get do now to get through the next three months with the least amount of stress and not only financial, but just everything chaos? <laughs> well, so you go first, Lamar. Oh, sure. I don't know. Um, so one of the things we do. So I, I guess one of the things 
first thing to do is let's write it all down. Let's just brainstorm. Get, get with your significant other. Bring the kids in there. Hey, let's write down everything we possibly either we're going to buy. Maybe we're going to spend um, cooking for Thanksgiving, cooking for Christmas, whatever your traditions are. Writing that stuff down. Presents for certain people. Let's write it all down. And then kind of brainstorm how we're going to handle that. Are we going to get everything on this list? Can we afford that? What's that going to maybe put some numbers beside it? What's it going to cost? But the main thing is come up with a plan for that, how we're going to pay for that or how we're going to handle that certain things. Or uh, what you know, the discussion we were having during the break was making things on your own. Maybe some of that's what we're going to do. Make some make some ornaments on our own for the for the tree or for Thanksgiving for Christmas. So that that's just a great way. Just go ahead and plan ahead. Go ahead and brainstorm. So that way it's not a surprise when we go, oh, gosh, we forgot about, you know, Cousin Sue about about that. We, oh, my gosh, she just had two babies. we got to make sure we take care of those. No, we, we're taking care of it now and writing it all down. So we'll be ready for it. Great. Great. And while you're writing it all down, that's like kind of like taking stock of what you have, like for, for kids, for instance, toys. I mean, I have three and you want to give them new things, but oftentimes people will send you things for them and maybe it's a different age group or maybe they're not quite ready. You need to put those away. And I love a good back stock, uh, like just having things. And that's kind of what to do after the holidays, but take stock, find things, maybe find some toys that they have not played with in our really good condition, put them. Oh, we lost your sound. Yeah, Heather, I don't know what happened. Okay. Well, on that note, what's really cool about that, I was thinking about that, it reminds me of all the, that reminds me of Toys R Us, Donna. We went to Toys R Us when they closed down. I'm and super- we started buying. We started buying things. All the all the stuff. You back? Are you? Good? Yes, my you my go. AirPods picked up. I don't know why. There's no one in the house. Um, <laughs> there's a ghost. Uh, so back stuff. So when you find these toys that maybe the kids have not used in a while, they won't even know if they're really young. We gift them or find a way to save money, and it's like Christmas all over again. But find things that you can you know, repurpose or maybe not have to rebuy. Um, and donations are also a big deal too. That's a really good way to also make room for the stuff coming in. That's great. Um, that's something I did with my kids uh, right before Christmas. They had to go through and clean out uh, a bunch of their toys to give away uh, before they were able to open. Oh. That, that's hard. And I guess the tip for that too would be don't ask the little ones if they want it or not because the answer is always going to be yes they're going to bring in like oh you know nostalgia go through the things that maybe you don't think are going to maybe them miss or if there's a question mark next to it t- remove it from the space and put it in like the garage or a closet called like toy purgatory where it could come back it's not really sure and then if it needs to come back you can like be the superhero and be like oh look what i found or if they don't ask for it like give yourself like a limit, like in three months, it's out the door, doesn't come back, then get rid of it. So it's still kind of, you know. Great yeah. tips, you guys. Uh, we, I just want, we have just a few minutes left. I want to make sure that we share your social media handle so if people want to connect with you, that they know how to find you. So if you guys wouldn't mind sharing. Go ahead. So uh, you can find me at on Instagram at chaos and cookies or Heather Steinker, either one. And I'm also on Facebook. Um, my website is www.chaosandcookies.com. Cool. And you find me on Instagram as well too. And um, lampshade consulting. And that's the same thing on Facebook too. So you can find me on there as well too. And I'll um, LinkedIn as well too. So I got a little bit every, everywhere for you to find me. Awesome. Thanks, Donette. I know we, I, this always goes by so quick. No, we never get it all in. <laughs> right. So I know, are you, are you taking clients still for the year or I, am always have, I know you clients. said you're so busy. I am busy, but I, yes, I'm taking clients and, and if you guys, I want to help you guys, let's make 2021 like the best ever. And the best time to start is now. So go to my website or go to my Instagram it's proverbsfinancialcoaching.com or at Proverbs Financial Coaching. Book a free consultation. Um, and in the box where it says, what would you like to talk about? Type in October podcast and you will get $200 off 
my services. I want to help you. I want to get you guys on this right path so that you can enjoy each and every holiday, birthday, event, whatever it is, without feeling guilty because you spent too much or now you got to put it on a credit card and how am I going to pay it off? So imagine if you could go through the next three months next year without worry or stress. And I can help you do that. So get to my website or my Instagram and book a consultation. I mean, now is the time to choose and decide that 2021 is going to be much a better year for you financially and in all things related to living an empowered and inspired life. You know, being having financial uh, peace, financial peace, being empowered financially is a huge, a huge uh, game changer. So definitely, it's a no brainer. Contact Donette. Uh, what do you want to take us home with, Donette? We got just two couple minutes left. So, if you guys didn't get anything from this podcast, get this. Have a plan. Write it down. This, these are the best things you can do. Um, go through, just like Lamar said, make a list of who it is you want to buy for, what it is you want to buy for. Include things that people forget about. Gifts for teachers or um, decorations, your Christmas tree, extra food. These are all the things that are outside of your normal monthly budget. Make a plan for it. Be realistic about it. Um, and again, if you write it down, like Lamar said, and you, it's like, oh, I can't do this then adjust it. It's your budget. It's your spending plan. Just adjust it. Um, And put this in your budget. Make sure you start now saving for things that you're going to do in December. Um, And I think also have those real conversations with your family. If it's tight, you really need to just have those conversations so it's not uncomfortable or, you know, sometimes families just get weird. So just have conversations and let them know what's going on. Hey, we're cutting back this year. Please cut back on our part or do a gift exchange um, where they would pick a name out of a hat. So you weren't obligated to buy everybody in the family a gift and, and really just take time to enjoy this time. Cause it really is about being with the ones that we love and celebrating them. It's wonderful. All great tips. I really wish for everybody to have a peaceful, uh, year end you know and then as we begin 2021 feeling more empowered feeling more centered 2020 was a master year i mean who would have ever thought huh right (laughs) (laughs) so it says we have two minutes left what is one tip that could change our lives today (laughs) i've got one so when you guys start 2021 when you, after Christmas, that's when you buy your wrapping paper because it's on sale and you buy it for the next, for the coming year. You, if you see a good sale and you know, it's going to be something you were going to gift later, grab it then. So you're not spending later, put it away, label it. And you have like a nice little backstop to kind of pull from. So then you're not spending later. You can kind of you know, keep track and just really make a plan and, and just be like, okay. And then the, you know, grab this or that, and this try to just be savvy and plan and backstock. I say backstock, like have some extras. Never know. Three words. It's, it's just stuff. <laughs> That's correct. That's it. You guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in everyone. Thank you for coming on today and sharing your incredible gifts and wisdom and everything you've done in your life to make things better. And we'll see you again next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everyone. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. Wake up to love your call to action. Tune in each week on transformation talk radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at CorneliaStephanie.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers. 
and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.